Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I am a watercolor artist. So today I'm going to be painting with the watercolor brush pens, otherwise known as watercolor markers, for you. I've been using them for about a year now, and I'm loving them. I've done a couple other videos on them that have been really popular, so I decided to do another video, but this time I'm going to be painting an underwater scene, so I hope you enjoy it. So I started a painting last night and I decided to put the rest of it on video. Um, I'm going to be doing this kind of underwater theme with the starfish and the shells and the seaweed and the coral and all that. So I just wanted to give you a little sampling of my process of painting my underwater themes. So I've got my Winsor Newton watercolors right here. And I also am going to be using, which I love, and I've mentioned this in several videos already, my Arteza um, Real Brush Pens. They're watercolor markers and you just lay down the marker and you take a little bit of water and you just kind of blend it in and it blends in beautifully. It gives you almost the, the, almost this textured, um, textured look. So I'm gonna show you how to use that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-wet some of my areas. So all I did first was I just kind of lightly sketched out my scene with a just a regular pencil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start adding in a little bit more um, of my color here just to kind of give my starfish a little bit more depth so i want like the top of him to pop out at me so i am pushing back his edges so it's going to give it kind of a three-dimensional look so i went ahead and i wet my my areas first and then i laid down some of my paint just so it, it blends a little bit better and if you think that there's a little too much paint here, just go in with a clean brush, drag it up and wipe it off on your paper towel and see how that automatically just lifts up that area again. If it's really saturated and the paint starts to go back to the middle of this part, just do that process again. Just lift it up with a clean brush. That's all. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start on this little spiral shell here. And I think, let's see, let's put a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna go over just my lines here that I had done with my pencil. And you can make these as whimsical as you want. They don't, I am not looking at an image right now. I just did all this out of my memory. So you can make your shells, your fish, you can make anything as whimsical and colorful as you want. Go ahead and just bring a little bit of that blue connected together here. Soften up my edges a little bit. I might even leave part of the shell white, I'm not 100%. So I'm going to continue to go around my shell. Okay, so you can start seeing that I'm just dropping in some darker tones of my green here. And that's kind of what I did with my shell right there also. Um, I, like I said before, I really like the push and pull of lights and darks. That's what I did up here. I added a little bit of a, a darker tone. So that's what I'm doing again down here. I'm just adding a little bit of this darker green to it because I just, I love the way it looks when you just add a little bit of dark to your lighter areas. It just makes it pop off the page. I'm gonna go ahead and do this shape right here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna wet my, my shape first. I just mixed on my palette a little bit of um, yellow, like a mustard yellow and an orange. And I'm just gonna pop that in there. I didn't want it to be too bright of an orange, so that's why I added a little bit of that mustard yellow, just to tone it down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna help this green a little bit. I think it needs another little layer here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and re-wet my area. I'm gonna try not to bump up against that because I don't want the two colors to mix together. But if they do, oh well. 
a little more green. I'm just gonna dot that in there, just like that. And I know a lot of watercolor artists want everything to look smooth and blended and, and don't get me wrong, I love that look too, where it needs to be that look, but I love texture. Um, that's one of the reasons I really love using these watercolor brush pens. They give me so much texture. So we're gonna go ahead and layer this painting with some of the watercolor um, marker in a minute because I, I do wanna show you what that looks like, but I do love texture. So my paintings aren't really smooth looking. I'm not one of those artists where everything has to be smooth and you can't get all these little blooms and stuff. I embrace the blooms. I think the blooms are beautiful. Um, it just, to me, it makes a painting. So, it, but it just depends. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in a little more of that orangey color in there. I think that's just beautiful. And then when it dries, it has so much texture and movement in it. I just, I just love that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my painting again. My little starfish is nice and dry. So I'm gonna add a little bit more layer to him. So I'm just coming in just with the tip of my brush here, adding a little bit more of that pinky color. It's dry, my starfish is dry. Now I'm gonna go in with just a wet brush, just some water, and I'm gonna blend that out a little bit. You could have wet your starfish first like I did before. This time I chose not to, no big deal. And I'm just going around his little edges or her little edges. And you want to take this in sections so that it doesn't dry on you. Because um, once it dries on you, then you might not be able to get that, that washed look that I'm trying to go for. So if you feel like you can't move that quick, then go ahead and wet your page first. That'll probably help you out. Sometimes you just never know if you're going to like something until it starts to dry. Then you can kind of figure out if you like if you like that way it, it turned out. And I know a lot of people are nervous with watercolor because once you lay down a color, it's really hard to go back. You can't just, you know, get the white of the paper back or anything like that. Um, like with acrylic and oil, you could just lay down some white paint on top of it and start over. Um, with watercolor, it's, it's not like that. You're staining your paper. You're never gonna get back to that white paper. So if you wanna leave your paper really, really white, go around an area or use some liquid frisket um, I don't have any with me right now, um, and there's not really that many areas that I'm going to be leaving that white. Like this one here, I might leave white in the shell, but I just went around it. So um, liquid frisket is nice too. So if you have some of that, you could totally use some of that. All right, so let's go back in, in our little shell here. So I added some purple, and maybe I'll drop in a little bit more just to punch it out a little bit more because you know I like those vibrant, colorful paintings. And then um, I did not paint my background yet. I am gonna give it like a light um, purpley blue uh, watercolor, um, uh, like underwater scene, so in the background. You could have done that first. Um, I chose not to. But if you did do that, you and you went over your whole sheet, obviously your pinks wouldn't be as pink and your blues wouldn't be as blue and your oranges would be more muted because orange and blue are complementary colors, so this would be more muted. So my suggestion to you is if you do the background first, um, just go around your shapes. And I am gonna go ahead and do the background and I'm still gonna go around my shapes, but my shapes will already be painted. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, down here, uh, I'm just gonna carefully go in between all these little leafy seaweed looking things. Um, if I had just done the whole sheet in the blue or the purple, my green wouldn't be as green as this um, because that's just how watercolor works. So if you want the true color of what's on your palette or whatever you color you mix, try to go around it and don't, um, don't paint over that section, leave it white. I'm gonna show you how to use these watercolor markers. Um, so I'm gonna do, this one's nice and dry. I think I'm gonna pull in this kind of purpley, 
So if you've got the Arteza brush pens, I'm using light magenta. So that's the color I'm using right now. And I like to go in with some lines. And if you push down really, really hard, you will get a nice thick line. If you don't push down hard and you just use the tip of it, you will get these really fine, thin lines. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just going down with a very light, light hand and I'm putting in my marks. And I'm gonna show you how beautiful these blend. All right, so I went ahead and I applied my, um, my watercolor marker. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just dab in and I'm gonna show you the look that I get. I wanna leave these lines here, but I wanna blend them a little bit. See that? I just added a little bit of water. It starts bleeding it together and it gives you this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful texture. See how it's already bleeding together there? All my little water droplets are starting to bleed together and it's creating this beautiful texture. I love that look. I just love that look. It's almost got the look of alcohol ink. If you've ever uh, worked with alcohol ink, it kind of has the same look. And um, I just, I love it. I'm gonna go around, add a little bit up here on my edge. But I do wanna leave my lines there. So I'm just gonna be adding in a little bit of that with the water droplets. Now, if when this dries, and I don't see my lines anymore because the water droplets have all come together. I can go in once it's dried and add more of my lines on top of that, which I've done before, and that looks just as pretty. Let's go ahead and do our, uh, our orange one here. And if you want to add different colors on top of this, um, you don't have to pick an orange. Like right now I'm going to be using, this is called cadmium orange. I'm going to go ahead and put that on top of my orange, but you could go ahead and put a pink or a purple or whatever on there. Um, so you could choose whatever color you like. But I'm just going to go ahead and kind of stick with my colors today. And I could leave it just like that and not even add any water to it. That's beautiful just on its own. But I'm gonna go ahead because I really wanna see what it looks like blended. And some of these markers blend a little bit better than others. You will start seeing, once you use them, you'll see which ones blend a little bit better than others. Now, the paper that I'm using right now, it's just a sketchbook, it's nothing fancy. I usually use, um, Arte uh, or not Arteza, I usually use Arches watercolor paper, which I love, that is my favorite watercolor paper. But this is a sketchbook that I had picked up the other day, and it's just a generic uh, sketchbook. I'm just gonna thumb through this really quick just to show you some of my paintings. So, and this is all with the watercolor um, brush pens. So this was another underwater theme that I did. Um, there is a little bit of watercolor, regular Winsor Newton under here, but most of this is the Arteza. And then I've got this one. And I think I pulled in a little bit of my acrylic ink on this one too. So as you can see, I'm a little bit multimedia. Um, this one's watercolor and the, um, the Arteza. This one here again is watercolor and the watercolor brush pens. That one's just watercolor watercolor. Here's another one that's the markers and the watercolor. Here's another one. Here's another one. This one's not finished yet. I still have to go ahead and finish that one. Just to kind of show you all the different. Then there's this one. I just did this a couple days ago. I did bring in a little bit of my white pen here. I'm going to show you. Uh, it's They're called Pasca pens and I believe they're acrylic uh, markers. I do love these. So once in a while, um, if I want to just add a little extra texture, I will pull in some of those. This was just some scenery. Actually, I did a video on this a couple days ago. So if you want to go back and see how this um, landscape was made, I do have a quick video. Not a long video, but I do have a quick video on this one as well. So you can go back and look at that if you want to. So I just picked up this really small uh, little sketchbook and I've been just doing um, some practice sheets in here. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of my process today. So like I said before, we might not be finishing this painting today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do, my starfish is still wet. I'm gonna go ahead and do the green on this guy. So here again, oh, and if you're following along, this is teal. I'm gonna do my little lines. 
All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my little line just to kind of close it off there. Pick up my water, put my little droplets again. This one dried gorgeous, look at that. I might go in and add a little bit more of my line work on top of this where it bled completely, but I really like that. And I'm gonna go outside a little bit of my line here because now I've got like a lighter line and a darker line. And I like the way that looks. That's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna pick up the same pen. Let's see, yeah, here it is. I'm just gonna show you going over. Now this is nice and, well, actually it's a little wet up here I see, but I'm not gonna go on that area. I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna drag in my little lines again. So see how you could do that? And bring in your lines once again. Now my paper is not completely dry because I do see the marker expanding a little bit. I don't know if you see that. I started out with light lines and now it expanded. If you don't like that expansion that it's doing, wait till your paper is completely dry. There. So I just went ahead and gave it a little extra, um, a little extra line texture right there. So I'm gonna try and pull in. I'm gonna see if this can pull in down in this section here. See how I'm just going over with a wet brush and I'm pulling in some of that magenta right here? If you want a nice light look of that marker, just get a wet brush and pull it in. Just like that. Now, if I went over this in the wet area with my marker, it's not showing up as nicely because the area is wet. Um, so these actually work better on dry paper and then wetting it. All right, I'm gonna try and do the same thing with my, my green up here, my teal. So I'm just going in with a wet brush and I'm pulling in. See that? I'm just pulling in from the edge my teal. Beautiful, love it. Let's see if the orange one does the same thing. Like I said, some colors work better than others. Well, this one's doing it too. It's pulling it in. See how nicely these markers work? And you can pull in as much as you want. Now, if you wanted it darker than that, um, you can go in, let this dry completely with your watercolor marker, make your edge again, and then pull it in again if you want to. You could do that as well. All right, let's go ahead. Our starfish is dry. Let's go ahead and make some little marks on him. Uh, let's see what this darker pink looks like, if it even shows up on here. Um, it does, but it's not as dark as I'd like. So... Let's go ahead and use, let's see if this orange one works. Actually, this orange one is really pretty. It's the same orange that we used on there. So I had, it has all these little bumps on it. So I'm just going over the bumps. All right, so let's go ahead and use a little brush and get those damp and see what it does. Blend them out a little bit. And I'm going outside of the line a little bit just so you get a little bit of this different value of it. So it looks a little bit lighter on the outside. But if you didn't want that, then just strictly stay inside your little bump area there. Okay, so I went ahead and I finished that area there with the watercolor Marco and then I put the water on top of it and just blended it around with this little brush here. Um, I'm gonna let that dry and then I think I'm gonna go in and put a little dot of like red or something on them just to pop them a little bit more. So I'm just gonna keep layering my starfish. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the watercolor marker on here. So we didn't do any of the marker on this one yet. This is uh, just purely regular watercolor. I'm gonna go ahead and add 
a little bit of purple on this one. Actually, I might want a little bit deeper purple. Yeah, I don't want that. I want a deeper purple. Let's go ahead and pick, this one's called Eggplant. So I'm just gonna go ahead, oh yeah, that's pretty, with just a shaky little line, just using the tip, and I'm trying to be shaky about it, like you drink too much coffee, because so I don't want it to be a perfect line. Um, to me, that's kind of boring. So, and then I'm just gonna kind of bring a little bit up into those little areas, those little painted areas there. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this does. And then if we need a little bit more, we'll add a little bit more once it dries. But you never know what the paint is gonna do. So just kind of start out with just one thin little line first. Like I said before, some of the paints blend beautifully and some of them don't. They need a little bit of extra help. And this one looks like it's blending beautifully. So I'm glad I didn't go ahead and put that second layer because then it might've been too dark. So pretty. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bleed a little bit out into this white area just to give it some shadow. So I'm just taking a clean brush with just water and I'm going over some of that purpley area, dragging it out into my white area, just to give a little bit of shadow. Like that. So pretty. And if you want to bleed that out even more, clean water, and just bring it out even more. I do wanna leave some of my white showing there because I do want this to be have some white in my shell. So I'm not gonna bring it out too much. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. These are nice and dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick up a green that kind of matches. This one's called Olive Green. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go over, just give a little bit of an outline, not the whole thing, but maybe just pick one side, kind of like where your light source is coming from and just do this on the opposite side. So it's like this is your shadowed side. So just pick one side and do your, um, your watercolor marker. That's pretty. And now you can leave it like that or you can go over it with some water. And I'm choosing to go over it with a little bit of water, bleeding it out a little bit into my little seaweed area here. Because I already had two or three layers of my paint. This is just giving it a little bit extra because I like when things pop and have texture. Really, really pretty. Um, I don't need to really do that with these blue ones because I just chose to um, do my darker value with straight watercolor. So I don't need to go ahead and redo those. Let's go ahead and add some texture. You know what? Let's go ahead and do our little... Let's do our background first, and then we can add our little seaweed on top of that. Now, see how this, I'm going to go right over these because these are so thin. Um, it would be a really, it, uh, it'd be a mess just trying to get in all these little crevices here of that little seaweed looking thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to apply some, um, just a watercolor wash. And maybe I'll just use kind of a blue color here. Add some water to this. Here, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just taking my palette. I added a little bit of blue there. I think it was a Windsor blue green. I'm adding some water because I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm adding a lot of water there. And I'm gonna go over just so we cover up some of that white. I'm gonna go carefully around my shapes that I just painted. So again, if you did this at the beginning, if you're doing this at the beginning, just go around your shapes carefully, even when they're not painted. And you can go ahead and wet your page first and put the, the paint down, or you could do it on a dry paper, which is called wet on dry. If you did it on a wet paper, it'd be wet on wet. And I'm just going in, in my sections that are already wet, and I'm just tapping in a little bit of a darker value of that same color, but just a little bit of darker, darker value of it, just so it gives some texture. Now these are blue, so I don't really care if I go over them. I'm just gonna lightly go over them. Add a little bit of texture there. Color. 
Now these I'm gonna switch over to a different brush because this is my, um, my half inch uh, wash brush and I don't want that because I have to get into these little areas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch over to my little brush. Since my page is still wet, I am gonna add a little bit of a pinky color to it. I'm just gonna pop that in here and there. A little water, just so I have a little bit more of a purple, purpley area, because blue and red make uh, purple. So I'm adding pink and um, pink into my blue, so it's gonna, when it dries, it's gonna be a little bit more of a purpley area. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this, and then we'll see what it looks like dry, and then I'll go ahead and do all those little um, seaweed looking things. Okay, so I went ahead and dried this, and then I added some lines on this green one over here, which you can see are probably still wet, because I just added a little bit of water. And then I went in with my purple that I had done before, the watercolor brush pen, and I just deepened my little swirl right here, my little spiral. So that's all I did. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and <clears throat> do a little bit more on this starfish. So I'm gonna use the same orange and just add a little bit extra. And if it's not punching it out as much as I want, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a red. It's not punching it out as much as I want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to switch to a red watercolor marker here. Oh yeah, that's giving it a little bit more punch that I wanted, okay. I'm just going ahead and I'm just adding like a little dot on top of those little circles and I just want to bring a little extra depth to those. All right, so now that my blue and my pink have dried for the background, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe with, should I do my purple? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just do purple. And I'm just gonna kind of copy what I did, not pressing down too much on my, um, my page here. Again, just using the tip of my watercolor brush. And I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of detail. I'm just copying my pencil, I'm just tracing my pencil. And if you didn't wanna do this with pencil and you feel like you could just do this without the pencil first, um, definitely, you know, you don't have to do the pencil. It's up to you. Now, if your page is still wet, be careful, it will bleed a little bit. So if you wanna get these crisp little lines like I'm getting right now, make sure your paper is completely dry. Otherwise, it will start expanding and your lines will be thicker. All right, so go back and look to see if there's any other areas you wanna fill in. I think maybe one over here. And I can get a little thicker in this area. So just go ahead and add more, just have fun with it. Just add more if you think it needs more in certain areas. I wanna see what it looks like even if I just add some little water droplets to it, just to fill in that area. I'm just experimenting. I don't know if I'm gonna like this. This is not a masterpiece, this is just my sketchbook. I just wanna see if I'm gonna like with just some droplets of water. I may like it and I may not like it. And so far, I kinda like it. I'm gonna go ahead and do it down here. So maybe this one's just a little bit more with the droplets and fill it in a little bit. I don't want to fill it in all the way because I still want to see some of that blue peeking through. But that's that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. So maybe I'm going to do that to this one and leave this one a little bit more crisp. I like it. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more to this painting. And maybe I will do a little... Oh, I also wanted to show you really quick how to use these little um, Pasca uh, markers. So I believe this is more of like a ink... Uh, like a acrylic inky um, paint in here. I'm not really sure. Just shake it up really, really well. And um, it's got this little tip on it. And what you do is you kind of press it down on a piece of paper a couple times till the ink comes to the tip. And then you can go in and you can make like little highlights if you want to. And it comes in all different thicknesses. This is probably one of the thinnest ones you can use. 
I just want to make some little dots on there. And we can go in and put some like little white highlights on these little side bump things here too. Just make sure your paper is dry, otherwise it's not gonna work. And then you gotta wait for the tip to dry and then um, kind of re rework it. And uh, then the paint comes to the tip again. So if you don't want to experience that, then just make sure that your paper is dry. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put some white lines on top of the, this green. It's completely dry, because we did that at the beginning of the painting. And I'm just gonna show you. So you can kind of come in with the white lines, even using this. Look how fun that is. So then you even get even more dimension. And you can make your lines as um, close together as you want. Look how pretty that is. Adding just even a little bit of white. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of white on this one too. Let me make sure it's dry. Now, it's not gonna give you a complete white bright line, but um, it does give really good coverage, um, but you will never get the white of the paper again, especially on these um, watercolor markers. <clears throat> it only lightens your color a little bit. It doesn't give you a true, true white. Let's go ahead and put a little highlight on these. Now, see, this is a little bit more of a true white on, as I'm adding highlights on these little seaweed looking things because I did not use the watercolor marker there. I just used straight Winsor Newton. So the highlight is showing up as white a little bit more than it did on the watercolor markers. That's really pretty. And I did use a little watercolor marker on these, but not a lot. So let's see what it does. Yep, yeah, it's keeping the white line. I might just add a couple more little highlights to it. Maybe some shaky little lines in there. That's pretty. Let's go ahead and do it on this green one now. And let's go ahead and add, yeah, this is dry. We'll add some here too. Now these come in all different colors. I sometimes use just the white ones, just for a little highlight at the end of the painting. Um, but it comes in red, green, blue, black. Even adding a little bit of black at the end of the painting is really, really nice. I seem to do that a lot too. I love adding white and black to my paintings. That just kind of brightened up the painting a little bit. It's dry here, it's just wet up in that little area. So let's go ahead and do this little area. Okay, so I'm gonna give a little bit of a highlight in this little guy. I know I deepened up his area really, really well with that purple marker. But now I'm going in with this a shaky little white highlight. All right, well, I'm gonna continue on this painting and I'll probably show you what it looks like when it's completely done. Um, but I just wanted to show you a couple techniques of how the watercolor markers worked on the regular watercolor. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.